Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? As I was wandering through my own personal adult playground the other day, I realized you the people have asked me many times to make a meal out of individual Dollar Tree foods. So when you the people ask, I listen and I do my duty. I wanted to make a meal with only foods from the frozen food section. So as a main course, I found a four ounce pack of Ocean Market's wild caught flounder fillets, which contain only wild caught flounder and sodium tripolyphosphate, which is a preservative. What would good quality, wholesome and delicious Dollar Tree food be without preservatives? There's one serving per pack. Per serving, there's 80 calories, one gram of total fat, no saturated fat, no trans fat, 50 milligrams of cholesterol, 220 milligrams of sodium, no carbohydrates, no fiber, no sugars, and 16 grams of protein. Yep, you guessed it. Of course it's a product of China, because there's definitely no flounder in the water surrounding the US. There's three different ways you can cook the flounder. You can pan fry it, microwave, or bake it. I'm gonna use my toaster oven. It says to cook in a preheated 450 degree oven for 12 to 14 minutes or until ready. What exactly does until it's ready mean? Does a white surrender flag pop up? Normally it would say until a certain temperature or until the fish flakes but I've never seen until it's ready. And I normally wouldn't cook fish from a frozen state, but it says on the package, cook from frozen. I could have thawed it out, but that would take too long and I'm lazy. Let's open up the bag and see what our flounder looks like. I guess it doesn't look too bad, but I can already tell this isn't one piece of fish. There's at least two or more small pieces in here. And as soon as I dumped it out, that was confirmed. There's more than one piece in here. And I was really feeling like I should have thawed them out, but I cooked as is. To go along with the flounder, I got this three and a half ounce bag of Jennifer's Garden Asparagus. And I really apologize for the quality of the pictures in this video. I was obviously having a bad day, and at the time, I didn't really give a quack. But you the people deserve better, so this will not happen again. The only ingredient, as it should be, is asparagus, so that's pretty promising. The serving size is the whole bag, which has 25 calories, no fats, no cholesterol, 10 milligrams of sodium, four carbohydrates, two grams of fiber, no sugars, and three grams of protein. If you were a betting person, I guarantee you'd bet that this was from China, but if you did, you'd be wrong. It's a product of Peru. With this being from Peru, maybe I should have seen if the Dollar Tree had any frozen deep fried guinea pig nuggets instead of fish, seeing as they eat guinea pigs in Peru. I bet it tastes like chicken. Now you can saute, steam, or grill the asparagus, but I'm gonna bake the asparagus with the flounder. So let's get it out of the bag and onto the pan. And it didn't look too bad to me for frozen asparagus. I seasoned the asparagus and the fish with a little salt, pepper, and garlic. And then I added a pat of butter to each. Then into a 450 degree oven until ready. Whatever the heck that means. I have two other side dishes to go with the flounder, one being these Larry's Sour Cream and Chive mashed potatoes, which years ago I ate often, and for what I remember, they were pretty good. Larry's potatoes make a good meal great. Enjoy delicious, convenient mashed potatoes no matter what the occasion. Larry's microwavable side dishes deliver the flavors you want with the taste the whole family will love. At first, the ingredients appeared to be okay, until I got to the dry Y. What's dry Y? If their marketing quality assurance team can't catch a simple misspelling error like that, I'm very scared of what their food quality assurance team misses. But overall, besides the mysterious dry Y, the ingredients aren't bad. There's two servings per box. Per serving, there's 190 calories, eight grams of total fat, two grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, five milligrams of cholesterol, 330 milligrams of sodium, 580 milligrams of potassium, 26 carbohydrates, two grams of fiber, eight grams of sugars, and three grams of protein. Let's get these out of the box, see what they look like, and get them heated up. And they look exactly like I remember them looking. And I can't remember how long it's been since I've had these. I know it's been a long time, that's for sure. There's two ways you can cook these, in the microwave or in the oven. I'm using my toaster oven again. So they go into a preheated 400 degree oven for 37 to 39 minutes. For the final side dish, I have a four ounce package of Pick Sweet Farms Farm Snacks cream spinach. And I'm very happy to see it's grown in the USA. There's a few more ingredients in here than I expected in such a simple dish, but what do you expect for a dollar? The serving size is the whole container, which has 90 calories, 4.5 grams of total fat, 3 grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 
10 milligrams of cholesterol, 470 milligrams of sodium, six carbohydrates, two grams of fiber, two grams of sugars, and four grams of protein. There's only one way you can heat these up and the directions are simple. Pop the vent and microwave per the wattage on your microwave. In my case, it's 1100 watts, so we're going for four minutes. And finally for dessert, we're having Jessica's Garden Tropical Blend Sun Ripened Quick Frozen Papaya, Banana, Pineapple, and Mango, which is all that's in the bag, so that's good. No additives or preservatives. There's two and a half servings per bag. Per serving, there's 80 calories, no fat, no cholesterol, no sodium, 19 carbohydrates, two grams of fiber, 14 grams of sugars, and less than one gram of protein. And it's a product of Good Morning Vietnam! I just poured some of the frozen fruit into a bowl and let it thaw while everything else cooked. After about 38 minutes, the Larry's potatoes are done and they looked and smelled good. The cream spinach was done after four minutes in the microwave and it also looked and smelled good. And finally, the flounder and asparagus were done too. And I've seen better looking asparagus, but the fish doesn't look too bad. So let's get everything plated up and give it all a try. And after it's all plated up, it doesn't look that bad at all, does it? I took the potatoes out of the container to make it look a little classier. Well, as classy as you can get with Dollar Tree food. I tried the flounder first, which looked edible. But on my part, I could have gotten some more color on the top. But I didn't want to overcook our Chinese flounder. I wasn't sure if it cooked the same way as our American flounder even though there were two pieces frozen together when I cooked it. It cooked pretty nicely and turned out moist and flaky. I took a bite and it wasn't really horrible, but it had that salty fishy taste that fish really isn't supposed to have. It's edible, but not great. Maybe a spritz of lemon would have helped a bit. But see how moist and flaky it is throughout? It could have been a whole lot better, but it also could have been a whole lot worse. Now for my namesake sour cream and chive mashed potatoes. They had a nice crust on the outside and were somewhat creamy in the middle, but still a little bit dry if that makes any sense. The flavor was good, but not as good as I remember them being years ago. But my taste buds have obviously matured. Too bad I haven't followed in my taste buds steps. Next was the awful looking asparagus. And from the looks of it, it almost looked like dried out canned asparagus. But in this case, looks were deceiving. It somehow still had a bit of texture and I thought I had really overcooked it. But I didn't, and it was actually tasty with the salt, pepper, and garlic. Not the best asparagus ever, but I'd eat it again. The cream spinach is up next, and I'm a big fan of cream spinach to begin with, so I was looking forward to this. And I like that it doesn't look like cream of spinach soup. It's nice and creamy, but not runny and soupy. And as soon as I took a bite, I was really happy with it. It had a really good flavor and texture. This cream spinach was very good. So good, I had to take another bite right away. Finally for dessert. I stabbed a piece of banana first, and I'm going to tell you now, from the way it looked, I wasn't going to try it. Frozen mushy banana will make me yak right away. I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, and I'm not doing it again. But it really looks like snot to me, and I know as soon as I put it in my mouth, it's going to feel like snot. So I put the banana back in the bowl and gave the mango a try, and it did look better. But it didn't have a lot of flavor, and it had that same slimy mushy texture almost as bad as a frozen banana. So the mango is a no-go. Get it? Mango no-go? I'll be here all week, people. Then for the papaya. And again, a no-go. With me, it's a texture thing, but the flavor wasn't even that good. So I finally tried a piece of pineapple, and thankfully the pineapple was not slimy or mushy, but it still didn't have a lot of taste. I don't know, maybe this stuff might be good blended up with a gallon of rum, but on its own, it's not good at all. So, was this $5 Dollar Tree meal any good or worth the $5? Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. And number five was the fruit. And you already know, I didn't like it. And number four, we have our wild caught Chinese flounder, which tasted exactly like you would think wild caught Chinese flounder would taste. Like Chinese flounder. It wasn't awful, but it also wasn't very good. The salty fishy flavor is simply not how fish should taste. And number three, we have the asparagus, which was better than I expected and just a step up from canned asparagus but I've definitely had better frozen asparagus. Number two are my mashed potatoes. I mean the other Larry's mashed potatoes, not mine. Although they weren't as good as I remember them being years ago, they were pretty good for what they are. Frozen mashed potatoes. And number one, obviously is the cream spinach, which was definitely on point flavor and texture wise, and it's something I'd eat again. Overall, besides the fruit, 
the meal was edible and a bit healthier than some of the other foods sold in Dollar Trees. But in no way, shape, or form was it a bargain, like the Dollar Tree and the other so-called bargain stores want you to believe when you shop at their stores. You can definitely make better homemade food for equal or less money. If you want a few ideas, check out my budget meal playlist. If you'd like to help support the Wolf Pit, consider being a patron. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month, that's only $12, for the whole year. Or you can pledge more. That's up to you. Either way, every little bit's appreciated and helps me produce more high quality videos more often for you, the people. Thank you all very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you soon.